Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, we're joined here with the administration and most of the board for in, an open public finance meeting. Uh, Mr. Gilfillan, who typically sits to my right, is unavailable. He is traveling for work this week, so he can't attend. So I'm going to call the finance meeting to order. I'm on the finance committee, as are most of the members here. So, Peter, if you want to take it away, and we'll ask questions in between. I, um, I'm okay. Can everybody in the audience see that screen fine well enough? Ms. Grant in the back, can you see that screen? Very good. I think we're good. Thank you, Peter. All right, so um, it's my charge to kind of relay what uh, the Finance Committee has discussed so far and present the preliminary um, budget picture. Uh, the governor released the state aid figures last week, and um, basically beginning now, we need to submit to the county uh, a series of documentation about uh, the preliminary budget for 17-18. So there are three main ingredients that are affecting this year's budget and I'm going to touch on each of them and then give a, a full picture of where we are. They're the state aid picture, our enrollment trend, and uh, health insurance costs. So start out, uh, as you know, if you, if you were paying attention last week, uh, we have received a, a flat state aid package for about the sixth year in a row, and those six years uh, follow a couple of years of uh, a steep decline in aid from uh, 2008 or 2009-2010. So state aid is remaining flat. Another way to look at it is on a per pupil basis. So at one point we were receiving close to $800 in state aid per pupil, uh, and now we're receiving less than $500 per pupil in direct state aid. And that would be one thing to manage uh, if inflation was flat or enrollment was flat, but our challenge has been that in the past decade or so, our enrollment continues to climb. And this year, of course, we anticipated there, that our enrollment would either stagnate or, or begin to fall a little bit. We've actually been anticipating that for a couple of years, and it has not yet happened. So when you overlay the two, you get a picture of state aid that is um, not keeping pace with inflation, not keeping pace with our enrollment, and an enrollment figure that keeps on climbing. And so there's a gap, basically, in our funding. So the third piece of the puzzle is the second bullet there, which is that uh, despite the fact that we've negotiated changes in our health insurance package for our employees, uh, the health insurance rate that we are looking at right now is a 14.5% increase. It actually would probably be higher, but we negotiated a two-year contract last year with Aetna, uh, so right now we're stuck at 14.5%. The state, even though it doesn't provide us with more direct funding itself, it does permit the Board of Education to um, increase the tax levy by 2%, and then an additional amount based on the state's own health insurance increases uh, and some other adjustments, such as enrollment. So this year, the district qualifies for a waiver to the 2%, in other words, in permission to exceed the 2% tax levy cap, if you will, uh, by $444,000 for the health benefits costs that the state is um, grappling with, and then uh, an enrollment adjustment of another $56,000. In addition to that, uh, we have about $220,000 of banked cap. That just means taxing authority that the board did not exercise in previous years uh, that is remaining. So, in other words, the maximum tax levy the board could propose or could entertain would be the 2% plus the above amounts, uh, and they total $721,000 roughly, or an equivalent of 3.2% tax levy increase. Um, another just way to look at the health insurance and, you know, in context is that the 2% tax levy increase equates about $1.2 million. Uh, a tax increase of 3.09, which is what we've discussed uh, to date in terms of keeping everything status quo with very minor adjustments in our program, uh, equates about $1.8 million. And you can see that health insurance eats up about half of that. 
just for a little context uh, in terms of what we are looking at in, with regard to our enrollment, I just kind of put this together this afternoon. Um, these are all the K through 12 school districts in Morris County. I know most people can't read that from here, but you've got Madison and Roxbury and Randolph and Jefferson and Kinelon and Mountain Lake, so on and so forth. Um, and this is just charting where the enrollment was in 05, 06, and then the percentage increase or decrease uh, over the past 10 years to 15, 16, which is the, the latest data available on the NJDOE website. Chatham is the top one. <laughs> so um, we've been bucking the trend, really, when it comes to enrollment growth, and that's something that we're struggling to contend with in terms of the budget. Uh, per pupil spending in that same group of districts, we still, um, on a per pupil basis, spend uh, less than the county average and less than most of other uh, K-12 districts in the county. All but one, Dover, uh, spends more than we do on a per pupil basis. And then another way to look at it, well, I'll hit two charts really quick. This is just the state average in per pupil spending. So in 05-06, um, Chatham was pretty close to the state. The state average for K through 12 districts with 3,500 or more students. That's the grouping that, we, that, that we're in. Um, and over time, the state um, per pupil, the average state per pupil rate has increased at a rate faster uh, than we've increased here in Chatham. And then finally, just you know, the last one on perspective, this is the, um, I went to the uh, Department of Community Affairs website for the calendar year 2016 on the state of New Jersey website. And what you can do is look at a community and just look at what their tax levy is for various purposes, the municipal tax levy, the school tax levy. So in terms of a lot of the districts, the K through 12 districts in New Jersey that we compare ourselves to from time to time academically, um, the various portion of the school property tax levy is this middle column. And then the enrollment is based on the uh, the figures published on the DOE website, and you get a per pupil number. And again, similarly, uh, beyond the county, statewide, uh, on a per pupil basis, Chatham um, still is, a, is spending less than, than most other districts. In terms of the expenditures, um, the number again, getting to the health insurance, is this benefits line here. Uh, it's a little bit less than 14.5% that I mentioned because there are other benefits um, in this number, uh, including dental, for example, and some other um, items. So what we've discussed so far with the um, Finance Committee is that a, a budget that, that pretty much leaves everything in place um, though would likely lead to some minor class size increases at the high school would be a tax levy increase, budgetary increase of 3.09% at the current time. Sorry, Mike, can I interrupt you just for a yep. minute? On this slide, the 2% increase cap mm -hmm. represents 1.2 million. Now of that, we need to pay for increased salaries and increased health care. Of the 1.2 million, how much of that is already taken up by, forget the waivers for a moment, just the 14%, 14 percent, 14 and a half percent, and also our- That's about 935,000. Both the health care just done, health insurance and then salary you know the steps. that's another nine hundred thousand so 1.8 million mm -hmm. and our cap is 1.2 mm -hmm. so we're already a shortfall of six hundred thousand right well that's what gets us to the 3.09 right. so doing nothing so doing absolutely nothing we're still at 3.9 well there's one there's one thing that's included in the 3.09 i'll get to that um but let me i'll loop back to that okay. other slide really quickly right. so yep yeah. yeah. you'll have to go back to the previous slide but for the cost per people of 14,858 so the state is contributing 500 dollars toward that per pupil. well there are two different numbers the the one number is this one that's the per pupil budgetary cost that the state publishes okay. And yes, one way to look at it is that the state is contributing $475 of that. So just to go back to what Joe mm -hmm. O'Neill used to always say, the income tax dollars from Chatham go out, they go into the general pool, we're getting $500. We're getting $500 back per on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So what's not ref what is reflected in the 3.09 is one additional counselor at CHS. 
and uh, probably about twenty thousand dollars roughly in security cameras in places where we where our principals tell us we need them what's not included um, are f changes in staff either as a result of enrollment um, fluctuation or because of uh, what the needs are at Chatham High School. So for example, right now, we are anticipating losing a teacher, at least one teacher at Milton and Washington, one teaching section. That's just based on the enrollment, the incoming kindergarten and first grade. We're anticipating increasing a staff member though at Southern. Uh, and that's just based on the enrollment pattern. And then at the high school, we're looking at about 50 students gained this year and then another jump next year. And so uh, Mr. Groh, the principal, is requesting more staff in you know, the various content areas to keep uh, class sizes roughly 24, 25. So if we don't add those staff members, the class sizes will float up a little bit, um, depending on the course and the way that the sections and scheduling breaks out. Uh, and then we don't have any extracurricular programs added in the budget uh, at this point. So going back, um, the 3.09 is kind of status quo plus a counselor. It doesn't reflect though any of the enrollment changes that lead to staffing changes that I just mentioned. Uh, and the tax impact on an average house, we'll break this out further um, when we do subsequent pre presentations and at the next board meeting in terms of per $100,000 and so forth. But that would be the tax levy at 3.09 if that number doesn't go up or down. It can't go up much more. 3.2 is the max that the board is permitted to raise the tax levy. Uh, this is just a historic look at the, the tax levy increase. When the state aid was lost in 10-11, um, the community made up the difference basically through taxing. Uh, so that was a 7.5% increase. What's the 07, 08, 8.2? Was that uh, construction or? No, that was just. A good year? Uh, it was enrollment was growing then uh, as well and um, I don't know what exactly the aid picture was like that year but okay. that's okay that was during 4% cap um, and like we say the calendar uh, we have a meeting tonight uh, the preliminary budget has to go to the executive county superintendent by um, St. Patty's Day and then it's not until May 1st that the board must act to officially approve a budget Do you mind going back to the detail um, expenses slide that you had up? Yes, thank you. If we had to try to get under um, 3.09, I mean, I know we can go up to 3.2. If if you're given 3.2, would you add it to staffing at the high school? Or you don't have a wish list? Not that I'm going there, but I'm really going the other direction. Right, we'd have to discuss that and determine what, you know, what would land on the top of the priority list. Okay. Now, if we're trying to get it under 3.9, because we've done nothing, so the only thing left to do is cut. Mm -hmm. So are there areas that we can cut in the existing budget that would get us, you know, under 3? And I don't mean significantly under, but at least a little bit under. Are there areas that we can, without significantly impacting the education and staffing and we can always, you know, examine cuts. They, they'll have an impact one way or another. So we can, you know, we, we can go there. The counselor and the cameras are one place that we could, you know, obviously take those items out of the budget. We can work with the principals and, and uh, supervisors and identify other places of potential cuts. And of course, we don't have to add any of the other requested staff at the high school so that if we do have some enrollment decline at the elementary, we that would be a net savings and then obviously the, the tax levy would, would decline. Um, just, you know, in terms of class size increase at Chatham High School, I think we have to be really careful and monitor those numbers closely. I don't want students to get, you know, have to be, you know, exited out of the class because classes are quote unquote full. I think as a high school, we've done an amazing job accommodating our students, allowing them access to programs and allowing them to have, you know, the program of studies that that is self-driven by the student with council recommendations. And I don't want us to be a high school that's all of a sudden closing classes, saying, sorry, I know you wanted to take this, but the class is now full because our class size is too large. So I think we have to look closely at those classes. We have to look at all our class sizes across the district, obviously, but um, and make sure 
you know, that this is not, that's not something that's going to happen as a result. And then the second thing, the slide that said about the enrollment decrease at Milton Avenue in Washington, just the kindergarten and first grade, I don't want anyone to think that it's a kindergarten teacher and a first grade teacher. Mm -hmm. That would be, can we just clarify that since, you know, it, that's where the decline might happen, but it may not necessarily be that teacher. Right. right, it has nothing to do with an individual. It has to just do with teaching sections. Okay. Thank you. My quick question. So this is the second or third year where we've really had these balloon insurance premium increases, correct? Last year was 13%? It, it was, I think it ended up being maybe 12. Like it was, it was in that neighborhood. 12, 14 and a half. Yeah. Do you have any visibility to what that number might be next year? Because let's, you know, we can try and tinker around this year. You know, we, I'm sure the taxpayers would like to see that number under 3%. But what happens next year if we have a 15% insurance increase? Or, or higher. Because we ca we're capped contractually at 14.5. It could go up to 20. Like, are we looking ahead? Are we going to have, uh, you know, we don't want to have a period where a year down the road or two years down the road we're in a position where... Um, we have to make more draconian cuts, um, and and because they're draconian by nature, we can't target the quote unquote low low hanging fruit. Um, but we'll have to target things that might affect the, the the student experience more significantly. I think that that very well could happen. We don't have any magic sauce for for curing the health insurance issues. The, the health insurance is based on our experience rating. So to put it just very simply, uh, and this isn't the best explanation, but it's a, it's a, it's a basic one. You know, we, the, we pay out our premiums, right, to the, to the provider that we have. And if their claims rate approaches the same amount or you know, the, it, it, the same level of the premiums, um, then we're not as an attractive a, a client. Yeah. Right, they're trying to return or an experience rating of let's say 82% or 85%. So that if they're collecting 85%, if they're collecting premiums, they're paying out 85% of what they're collecting. Our experience rating has been higher than that for the last couple of years. So we're not attractive, as attractive as we could be to other providers. And the provider that we have had, whether it's been Horizon, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, or Aetna now, um, is not willing to give us a very low rate increase because our experience rating is high. We've, we've negotiated changes with our um, teaching staff and other units to, re, you know, to try to contain costs in health insurance, but the rate increases are something that um, we, we just haven't been able to get our arms around. And there's no guarantee that we won't have a significant problem down the road that will lead to more substantial cuts to programs. Well, is that for good news, Sal? It's troubling. It is Thank troubling. You, it's extremely troubling. I think the public needs to hear that, though. It's, you know, we need to be candid um, because... Uh, the 2% doesn't allow to even keep the lights on now. It doesn't allow to keep the lights on, and we're operating at a, at a, as a fairly efficient, well, I would go further, uh, a very efficient school district. We have one of the lowest costs per pupils, and we're still experiencing uh, this type of, of, of pressure. And, uh, and the last thing we want to want to see is it affect the school experience for the kids. Um, that, that's going to eventually trickle down to the home values as well, if that were to happen. Other districts don't have the same health care, correct? Right. So we are, we're locked in for two years? No, this is our last lock. Our last lock. But other districts may be more attractive and don't have the increase that we're looking for. Every, it's different in every district. Yeah. Even right now, today, we still, our rates are still lower than the State Employees Health Benefits Plan, by and large. Um, we, we'll, get, we'll get to a point where we'll, we'll cross, and then you know, we have to re-examine and speak with our bargaining units about whether or not it makes sense to move to that. Okay. And it, we're not there yet, though, correct? Our, with our, this increase in July, yeah. we will go passed some of the plans in the state employees health benefits plan. Okay. Not all of them. So that, Sal, to the, in part, that's maybe the answer if we're up to 20%. We, we have, have to, to switch, to the, state. switch to the state system. Correct. Um, the other option, of course, is to go to the voters and say, here's the picture. We have to cut, 
you know, five staff members, or do you want to increase the operating budget? I mean, we're not there. That's a year down the road, depending on the insurance costs. I mean, maybe we'll catch a break and not be this high, but that's always an option as well. If, if, if it's going to sin significantly impact the education and property values and, you know, five years down the road, you know, we're looking at which were very troubling test scores, troubling, you know, uh, cr extracurriculars that were cut. We may have to go back out to the, the town and say, you know, these are our choices. You can increase taxes and pay for these five teachers, or we stick with the cap and we cut headcount, because there's no other way to come up with that kind of cash without cutting headcount. Cutting pencils and paper is not going to do it. Cutting sailing and paddle, no offense to those clubs that would, haven't even been funded yet, it's not going to get us there. Even if we cut every single athletic program, that's just about a half a million dollars. That's cutting every single solitary athletic program. It's still not going to get us there. So we're going to have to, we're, we're, you know, I, I know we're running a little bit out of time or coming close to time, but I would ask that, then I'm kind of looking to you, Peter and Mike, to go back and see where we can pick up some savings, whether it's leaning existing budgets or, you know, a little bit more insight into enrollment and staffing needs. But for, for our next meeting, the 3.9, I'd like to see if we can get that under three, but I'd like a list of what we're giving up. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah. Sally, are you good with that? I'd like to see what we're giving up for that. If there's low-hanging fruit, we, we need to attack that now. I agree. I just want to be clear. I don't want to just say slash and not know what I've just slashed. I, I want the nouns behind it. We can do that. A lot of the low-hanging fruit has been picked to get us to the point of the 3.9 and the ability to add the security cameras okay. and the, uh, the counselor at the high school, but there's right. always a little more of tightening the belt. Okay. Um, I'm oh. sorry, Lada, go ahead. I um, just had a question in terms of your calendar. I know you said that um, there will be another open finance meeting, but are you going to be also going to the PTOs and um, going over the numbers yes. as well? All to all, all schools mm -hmm. okay. before the budget approval or in before the it should we should be able to get them all in before the budget approval. Okay, so if they had any concerns, they could voice them at that time. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? No, that put me in a good mood. So yeah, well, it's only going to get better. Um, Peter, do you want me to open up the regular meeting? Sure, I'll catch. You. You'll catch up to me? So um, we're moving from the open public finance meeting into our regular public board of ed meeting. Um, and then we'll be breaking for a short while just to go into executive session to talk to our attorneys about some legal matters. And don't worry, though, we're back at 730, so hang on. Talk amongst yourselves. So, But I do have to do some housekeeping, otherwise Peter will yell at me. So I'm calling the meeting to order, and I have to read the open public meeting statement. In accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, I wish to announce that the New Jersey public meeting law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the school districts of the Chathams have, of, of education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, place thereof posted in the board administrative offices sent to the clerks of the Chatham Borough, the Chatham Township, the Library of the Chathams, the Chatham Courier, the Daily Record, the Star Ledger, oh, and this is a new one, and the TAP, the, uh, which is a news online. You, that's a new one. See, I was paying attention. Um, Peter, would you mind taking attendance? No problem. Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Arnold. Here. Ms. Chipperelli. Here. Ms. Clark. Here. Mr. Connors, Ms. Curlin, Ms. Kenneth, Mr. Here. Mr. Valenti. Here. Ms. Weber. Uh, thank you very much. Um, if you are able, would you mind standing and joining me for the Pledge of Allegiance? And the flag is over here now. I know. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we need to, is Rich, is Rich on his way? Uh, Tom, we're going to uh, break into executive session. I make, I make a motion to um, adjourn the public meeting, go into executive session. Action will not be taken, but we will be back. Um, Michelle second. second. Oh, I ad-libbed a little bit there, Peter. Okay, very good. So we will be back um, 
hopefully as promptly as possible to 730.